Hello and welcome to the How To Carnivore podcast. I'm your host, Simon Lewis, and you're tuning into the Plant Free MD series with Dr. Anthony Chafee. Dr. Chafee is a surgeon, nutritional researcher, and former pro rugby player. He's been strict carnivore for three years and an on and off carnivore for more than 20. Dr. Chafee looks and feels like a real life superhero. If losing fat, building muscle, finding focus, and getting the most out of life is important to you, you're going to love the Plant Free MD series. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor, Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is just to eat meat and that's what you should do. But if uh, you're hiking or road tripping or stuck at work and you want something nutritious that is just meat, fat, and possibly salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. I like this product not only because it is pure meat, but also because I really want the Carnivore Market to thrive as well. The more we support meat-only products, the more people will make meat-only products, and this will bring us into the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to check out, then take a look and use my discount code HTC to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks guys. So Asha, I've been, yeah, I've been following you for a while on Instagram. Um, nah. and, uh, I don't know how I got into, I always just remember seeing those, um, like the shots of food that you post where you always do like the brisket fried in tallow. Um, and then you're talking about, I don't know, basically being jacked and healthy at a a slightly older age Um, and it always really got my attention how how old are you Uh, 49 49 yeah cool and and where are you based i'm in uh, las vegas las vegas nice yeah many other carnivores in Mm -hmm. vegas uh there are a few yeah i've run into a few on uh on instagram and they're actually having a meetup um next month so that'll be uh That'll be interesting. I attended one of those uh, probably about three years ago with about, yeah. I want to say like three or four other people. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, this one, this meetup supposed 10, 15 people there. So that should be fun. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, so what, what what got you into Carnival? How, how did this all start? Um, so before I went Carnival, I've been Carnivore for four years. Uh, before I went Carnivore, I was keto, uh, for, for quite some time and then paleo before that. And so I had been, you know, it's been about 10 years since I've, um, really changed up my, my diet and gotten really interested in nutrition though. I was always, I always had an interest in nutrition. Um, in high school, I, I was on the wrestling team. So we had to make weight, um, every week. So I was cutting weight every week. And so, you know, I was cognizant of, of what I was eating and, um, and, you know, I also, my, my teammates, my friends and I would, would lift weights, work out, um, back in the day, it was, you know, all about carb loading and, uh, um, getting in as many carbs as possible to fuel your, your gains and your growth. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was interested in, in nutrition back then. And then it kind of, you know, um, I kind of lost interest in it until I hit my mid thirties and started having, uh, experiencing health issues, um, health problems, which were kind of surprising and, I uh, didn't expect to, to encounter. And, and so eventually after a number of years, um, stum- stumbled upon the idea that maybe diet and nutrition has something to do with how I'm feeling and functioning both mentally and physically. And so that's kind of what, ignited the spark and then um yeah it just grew and grew and um so spent the past 10 years studying about nutrition uh, reading a lot about it um <clears throat> practicing it um it, in my work uh, working with clients and so yeah it's, it's been an interesting journey mm. so so 10 years ago and it sort of went like paleo keto carnival was that yeah. kind of how it's transitioned yeah yeah i think that's that's pretty common right I think it is. Yeah, it's pretty common. And, and I think like many other people who, uh, who are carnivore or went carnivore. So, I mean, I felt really good, uh, on keto and, you know, I didn't think I could feel much better than how I felt at the time. I mean, you know, physically, mentally, um, uh, you know, uh, workout wise and so forth. And so I was pretty happy. And then I kept hearing about or reading about people who, had been keto and then went carnivore, tried this crazy carnivore diet and said they felt 10 times better than they did when they were keto. And I was like, how can that be possible? (laughs) And so, yeah, I heard that enough times and 
And then I just said, okay, well, let me, you know, I'm curious and I like to, you know, try things out and test things out. So let me try it on myself. Um, so yeah, I said, I'll try it for a month and see, see how it goes and, and, you know, and then go from there. And yeah, that's, uh, so it's been so four years so far. Yeah. When, when you were doing keto, were you, um, obviously you were eating more than just meat. Were you going for like the keto snacks or what was kind of the stuff outside of carnivore you were eating? Yeah. So when I was keto, I was really clean. I didn't eat like keto processed snacks and, and yeah, junk nice. foods and packaged foods. It was basically what I ate was for each meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, a salad, which was like greens, uh, oh, okay. avocado, tomatoes, maybe some, you know, um, uh, roasted, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, and then, um, a protein on top. So if it was, if it was breakfast, I'd have some eggs on it, uh, with some cheese. If it was lunch or dinner, I'd have some chicken or fish or maybe some beef and, you know, put some olive oil and some lemon juice on it, maybe some, you know, feta cheese, stuff like that. So that's, pr that's pretty much how I ate when I was keto, uh, pretty clean, uh, you know, no fruit, no sweets, no sweeteners, uh, and again, I felt really good. Um, yeah. I thought, you know, I was, I felt the best I could feel that was, that it was possible to feel, but, um, but yeah, that wasn't the case. Um, which I found out when, you know, when I went car carnivore. Yeah. So it was low, it was low sugar and it was pretty kind of like sort of basic veggies, like salad and maybe a bit of broccoli. Um, but yeah. it wasn't that high fat. Whereas now it seems like when I see those shots of you eating the brisket, and like you're cooking it in the tallow and the tallow just stays in the pan. Like, I feel like you're much mm. higher fat now. Would, would that be right? Oh, I, I eat very high fat. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I would say, um, you know, fat's probably 80% of my calorie caloric intake, um, protein being, in, you know, the, the remaining 20%. Um, and I just found uh, that I feel the best. I function the best. Um, I just feel very, very good and satiated when I mm. eat high fat. Like I can't, I can't really eat a ribeye steak just by itself. That's not, that's not fatty enough for me. Even and if it's like quite a fatty ribeye, because that's, we, we think ribeye might be 60 to 70% of calories coming from fat. If you eat a ribeye, what do you think? Probably. Yeah. But so I like I so my typical meal, um, the one that you see on Instagram with the yeah. you know the shredded brisket fried with pieces of fat and everything, uh, that's probably about ten to twelve ounces. I eat you know a, a meal is the whole meal is ten to twelve ounces, and I am a hundred percent totally satiated. Mm -hmm. And I stay and so I have that for breakfast before I leave for work, wow. and I'm totally satiated and satisfied until I get home from work at five or six or seven, and then I have another ten or twelve ounce meal, something very similar. And I'm good to, for the next morning. So 10 to 12 ounces per meal when I'm eating high fat, I can eat a 20 ounce ribeye or a 22 ounce ribeye, not feel that very satisfying feeling of satiety. Mm. Still like my stomach physically feels full, but I don't mm. feel satiated and I don't feel as good as I do when I eat a lot of fat. And then I get hungry like you know, three hours afterwards, uh, if I'm, I'm, I get hungry. Like if, if I'll be at, you know, at a restaurant and have a ribeye steak at six o'clock, nine o'clock in the evening, you know, we get home and like, I need to eat something else. Like I need to eat some fat or something else. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. So for those down under, we're talking about a 300 gram meal, which is like 10, 10 or 11 ounces. Um, Asher, is this, are you adding a lot of fat to the, cause am I right in saying it's like chuck steak or brisket that you normally go for? Yeah. Most of my go-to meats are like briskets, uh, short ribs, yeah. um, you know, sometimes yeah. chuck roast. Um, yeah. those are the, the main things that I eat. And then I also, if it's like chuck roast or if it's a steak or if it's ground beef, uh, so I buy a lot of fat trimmings and I'll, I'll fry those, fry them up, crisp them up. And I'll eat those with, you know, a good like handful or, uh, or so with whatever meat I'm eating. If it's, you know, if it's too lean, but typically a, a nice fatty brisket with, um, you know, where the butchers leave on a lot of the fat or the short ribs where the, again, the butchers are leaving on the fat and not cutting because some places they'll cut, you know, they'll trim off a lot of the fat. And so that's not enough for me. But if it's a good fatty, you know, a couple pieces of short ribs, some brisket, I don't need to add additional fat to that. Um, but most other cuts I have to add like fat trimmings and, um, or like extra brisket fat that I have. Um, I'll have to add to that. 
Mm. How, how do you feel when you go like high protein? So if you were to just say you're doing the ribeye, you're doing the ribeyes, you said that you're, that you're hungry more often. Mm. Um, does it kind of, does it affect your body composition and does it affect your energy? I'm curious to hear what you think. Well, I haven't done it long term just because when I have eaten a higher protein, lower fat meal, I just don't feel very good afterwards and don't feel, yeah. don't feel that extreme satiety. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I don't want to eat, you know, high protein, low fat again. So I'll conscious, you know, I'll make an effort to, to eat a high fat meal. And, and it's interesting because I look and I see, and, and, you know, not everybody agrees with me and some people like eating high protein and, and, you know, lower fat. Um, I, I don't think that's optimal though. I think optimally we need to be eating a lot of fat. I mean, I think our, our endocrine system needs a, a lot of fat. Um, and, and just like how I feel when I'm eating a lot of fat versus, um, eating high protein, it's, it just doesn't compare. And it's very like, uh, for me, unsatisfying to eat a, a lower fat meal. And so I see people on Instagram posting like, you know, their steaks or their, you know, the the most interesting thing is when people post like oh these are the three ground beef patties that i had for you know for lunch today i'm like oh my gosh how are they able to just eat those like dry ground beef patties with no, no extra fat and like i'd be you know i'd be miserable if, if i had to eat that um but but a lot of people like it and a lot of people you know swear by it so yeah. it, it's interesting but for me yeah i couldn't do a couple burger patties i couldn't do like a steak and be satiated afterwards. Very interesting. Yeah, because I because I do the burger patties sometimes, and it's when like I'm on the go and I'll go to a McDonald's and I'll just get the Angus beef burger patties. I'll get three of them, and yeah, they are lean, and you, I really don't feel that great after them. And I have a feeling that they kind of make me put on weight, and it's you know like muscle, but also a bit of fat. Um, because I really am just consuming so, so much meat. And then when it comes, I have them at lunch and then it comes to dinner, I'm hungry again. Mm -hmm. um, and I do feel a bit fatigued after. So I'm, um, I'm definitely with you on, on this. And I think like when Dr. Chafee and I coach people, we're like, we encourage people to go for 70% of calories from fat. And mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, I think what, Broadly speaking, what we should all be going for is like health and happiness on carnivore. And I, I think calories somewhere around there or even higher, like 80% from fat, like what you're doing. We do see a lot of people hit that kind of like, I feel really great and I'm really happy. And it kind right. of um, seems like a bit of the sweet spot. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. And it's interesting also from a vantage point of like, um, you know, fitness and body composition where yeah. so many people think, oh, if you eat that much fat, like if I eat that much fat, I'm going to get fat, I'm going to gain body fat. Mm. And it just, it doesn't. And, and I've heard some people will try like, oh, I tried high fat and I gained like three pounds. And when they, you know, when they say that, um, I don't think they were truly eating high fat. I think they just, they added a little bit more fat than they were eating typically, and they probably kept the, their high protein level the same. Yeah. So they were consuming more calories and, and, and higher quantities of food and, and then gained a few pounds. Whereas if, when you eat high fat, like 70 or 80% of your calories, you can't eat the same quantity of food. Like you're going to be satiated much quicker. Like for me, I, I eat half the amount yeah. of my high fat meals that I do if I eat a, like a ribeye, which again, I don't consider a ribeye to be high fat. Um, so I can eat 20 ounce ribeye or I can eat 10 ounces of fatty brisket with brisket fat pieces or fatty short ribs. So, and that's really where I think where that impacts your, your, um, your body composition because your overall caloric intake is probably a little bit lower when you're eating high fat. Um, you don't need to eat as much food in terms of quantities and you're, you're eating, in my opinion, the right amount, the correct amount of protein. You're not eating too much protein. So your body's not converting that excess protein into, into glucose and then storing it as body fat. And, and, you know, like for me, the, like the more I've dropped my carbohydrate intake and increased my fat intake, the leaner and stronger and um, I, I've become. 
and mm. I'm, you know, I'm pretty lean. You you can see pictures on my Instagram and super lean, at, super lean. Yeah, and I'm not, and I'm 49. I'm going to be 50, and you know, later this year. And I don't go crazy in the gym. I don't do any cardio. I lift weights for about an hour, um, three or four times a week. Basic uh, compound push pull uh, weightlifting exercises, and, and that's it. And I don't. I don't do ab workouts. Again, I have no cardio, no nothing. And I'm not trying to lean out. I'm not trying to, you know, I don't do bulking or cutting. I just eat to satiety. I eat high fat carnivore to satiety. And, and my body composition is better than it's ever been without me trying, without me making an effort. So it's, it's really when you're eating correctly, it's effortless, I think, to, uh, for your body composition to optimize and to stay at an optimal level. Like I haven't gained weight, you know, like some people will, you know, gain a few pounds, lose a few pounds. That hasn't happened. Like I, I stay like very consistent, uh, at a very consistent weight and, and body fat amount. And, you know, as I'm, you know, building muscle and so it, it works really well. It sounds really counterintuitive, you know, eat 80% of your calories is, is fat, is fat. Like that doesn't sound like the optimal way to, um, to optimize your, your body composition, but um, for me and for a lot of other people, it works very well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think that's kind of like expert level carnivore really. And that's where a lot of people kind of end up because there's a lot of experimentation at the start, you know, at the start, yeah. people are experimenting with, um, you know, basically just eating a heap of meat, uh, and like, you know, making strange meals that look like, you know, like carnival pizza and like, you know, like carnival burritos or something like that. Um, whereas then eventually you start to think, okay, well, what do I actually feel best on? And, you know, it, it, exactly what you're doing with the, uh, with the high fat. And I mean, it sounds like, am I right in saying that you, that you're just on ruminants, like 90% beef or something like that? Probably more than that. Late, yeah. Lately, the past several months, it's been only beef and lamb. Um, so, so yeah. And um Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you? Sorry, sorry, I'm uh, late. Just got caught up with a couple of patients. Not a problem. Yeah, we've just been uh, been getting into it, talking about how Asher basically does carnivore. Um, he's been carnivore for four years. That's right, isn't it, Asher? Yeah. Uh, and went sort of like paleo keto carnivore, as so many people do. And I was just calling him expert level carnivore because he does eighty percent of his calories from fat. And ninety five percent of what he eats is beef. Nice. So it's pretty. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty expert level. And what yeah. actually you're eating? You're eating twice a day. Twice a day, yeah. Twice a day, like I said, each meal is about ten to twelve ounces. So a total of you know twenty twenty four ounces of food a day. Uh, very high fat and pretty much only beef. A little bit of lamb every once in a while. But, uh, but yeah, that's how it's been for a while. And, <clears throat> you know, of course, when I started carnivore, it was much different. I was eating, uh, you know, a much wider variety of different types of foods, different, um, you know, different types of meats and dairy and eggs. And, and yeah. that slowly as time went on, you know, became more and more narrow, um, the types of foods that I was eating, not because I was trying to do anything. It was just, you know, I, what I try and do is be intuitive and listen to my body and listen to what my body's asking for. And, just as time went on, my body was asking for a m much more narrow, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, fewer types of uh, different types of foods, and which is basically yeah, beef and lamb. And so the other stuff kind of dropped off uh, along the way. And you know, I th I think and I think it's because uh, ruminants, beef and lamb are most nutrient dense, um, for humans and, and are the optimal food for humans. And so I think that's why a lot of us <clears throat> gravitate to, to, towards eating, uh, beef and lamb, you know, predominantly or mostly. Um, so it seems like that's that type of evolution, uh, or progression is, is, you know, fairly common amongst longer term carnivores. Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly found the same thing myself. You know, I, I've always liked beef and steak and that was always my go-to anyway. But then when I was doing it for long enough and I had, you know, bacon or eggs or pork or chicken or whatever, I still felt great, but I, I didn't feel as just 
amazing as, as on beat. And so I just, just naturally, that was where my instinct said was just like, you know, just to stick with beef. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much that happened. In, what happened to me? Like I, I just, mm -hmm. yeah, pork didn't feel too good after eating pork chicken, uh, you know, others like other things just like, ah, uh, you know, and you just don't feel as optimal and as good as, yeah. as you do when you eat, you know, a, a good meal of just beef. And, and yeah, so like exact same thing with me. Yeah. So Asha, I suppose, um, carnival for here on, from here on in, I mean, you feel like you've kind of like nailed it at 49. You, you're enjoying the lifestyle. You're just going to keep it going. I mean, yeah, you know, I, my, um, opinion has always been and outlook has always been like, I'm, you know, I'm going to do nutrition wise and, and lifestyle wise what helps me optimize how I'm feeling and, and my health. And, you know, I'm not married to any certain way of doing things, eating or exercising or whatever. Um, if I stop feeling this good, or I stop feeling optimally eating carnivore, then yeah, I don't see any reason why not, why I wouldn't try something else, mm. but it just hasn't tried. It just hasn't happened yet. Like I, I continue to feel amazing and like I, like I said earlier, when I was keto, I felt really good. And I thought, wow, this is like as good as I'm, I'm going to feel. This is great. And, and then I, you know, kept hearing and reading about people who had been keto and then um, went carnivore, tried carnivore and felt 10 times better than they did when they were keto. And I thought, how can that be possible? Like, mm -hmm. how can you feel, how can I feel better than I feel now? And so finally, after hearing you know, more and more people talk about it and write about it. I thought, okay, I, I got to, you know, give this a shot myself and see if mm -hmm. there's, you know, anything to, um, you know, to all these stories that these people are telling. And, and yeah, I did that. And I said, oh, I'll try it for a month and see how it goes. And lo and behold, I also felt 10 times better. And as the months progressed, um, kept feeling better and better to where, yeah, there's like, there's no comparison to how, you know, to how I feel as, as a strict carnivore to how I felt as, you know, eating very clean uh, keto. Like it's just so much better. So as, as long as I continue to feel this good and to function this well and to have this much energy and strength and, and um, you know, no reason why I'm not going to continue uh, with carnivore. And especially since I don't, you know, like, like Anthony was saying, I don't crave, he, just like he doesn't crave any, any other types of meat or any other foods. Like I don't either. I don't, I certainly don't crave any plants, vegetables, fruits, sweets, anything like that. And I mean, I don't even crave like, no, I don't even crave like fish, chicken, pork, stuff like that. It, like, I don't really crave that. And I mean, you know, I'll eat it. I won't eat plants, but I'll eat, you know, pork or I'll eat fish or whatever. If, you know, if I have no other options or if it's around and but I don't crave it. And I certainly don't feel like eating that. What I feel like eating all the time, every day, every time I eat is beef. Mm. Mm. Who's um, like, what information were you reading or were you watching when you were, when you were getting into carnival, what was kind of like the big launching point for you? Well, I remember one of the things was one of Sean Baker's um, videos or interviews. I don't remember if it was on Joe Rogan or, or some of the other mm -hmm. things. And, and I, you know, I, Michaela Peterson, I heard her story and there were a few other people online that, you know, I heard about their, their accounts of when they, you know, them going carnivore and, and feeling so much better and having, you know, having resolved, uh, <clears throat> you know, a number of health uh, concerns or health problems uh, so it was, yeah, I was hearing from those, but I remember hearing from, you know, Sean Baker um, and, and some other people and just, you know, after a bit of time, my curiosity was peaked, like how can, you know, how can they feel or how's it possible for me to feel so much better than I feel now on keto? So yeah, I eventually decided to give it a shot. And it's interesting because so this is back in like mid December when I said four years ago, when I said, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it for 30 days. I'm going to do it, you know, new year's January 1st. And I start off, I'm going to do it the month of January. I'm going to do a carnivore. And so for those last two weeks of December, I was like freaking out. I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to only eat meat and like no vegetables, nothing else for a whole month? Like, and, and then, so then I'd tell myself, ah, whatever, big deal. Like, no, you know, if, if I get sick of it after a couple of days or after a week or two, whatever, I'll just go back to eating keto and, you know, not a big deal. Um, so, but I remember like being kind of distressed and like thinking, how am I going to do this? 
psychologically, it seemed very difficult um, to, to do. But um, yeah, once you do it, once you get through the through those first, um, you know, that first week or two, um, that adaptation period where not, you're not feeling so hot, um, then oh, yeah, the, the, then you get it, then you get why, why people uh, go carnivore and why they stay carnivore. Yeah. And the, so since then, like, what, what about like your family and friends and things like that? Have, yeah. have they sort of come around uh, to this? Or what are their thoughts on it? Um, yeah, so, you know, of course, most of my family and friends think I'm totally nuts. <laughs> um, they, they got past the, the thing. Yeah. yeah, like in the beginning, my wife was freaked out. Oh, my God, you're gonna have a heart attack. You need to get your <laughs> cholesterol t- checked and, and this and that. And, and, and then, you know, she came around and I eventually got blood work done, you know, several months later. And so she kind of calmed down and, and, but, you know, I imagine most people, well, so most people probably think I'm crazy, but then it's hard for them, for them to argue with the fact that I'm like in way better shape than any of the, any of the, them are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, you can tell I'm thriving. You can tell I feel great. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any health issues or health problems. Um, you know, people my age, I'm 49, a lot of my friends and people are, you know, have all kinds of health problems or on, you know, um, taking testosterone and, um, you know, other, like they're not in very good shape physically. And so, so I think there's kind of like, mm, well, maybe that, you know, maybe there's something there, but, you know, for them, for people who are eating a, a standard Western diet, it's just so extreme and so far out there to where I'm sure, you know, none of them would consider it. Some have talked about it, like, oh, maybe I'll try. I had a friend who tried it for about six months, felt great. And then, you know, fell back into, um, you know, eating some carbs and, and some stuff over the weekends. Uh, what's interesting is that um, my daughter's boyfriends, so I have a 21 year old daughter and 18 year old daughter. And so their boyfriends, they're, you know, into going to the gym and lifting and, you know, drinking their pre-workouts and their <laughs> post-workouts and all that. And so they, they see my Instagram, like, oh, dude, you're, you know, you're jacked and this and that. And, <laughs> and so, you know, I'm t- t- telling them about carnivore. So they, th- they want to try it. Um, so they're talking about try, trying it, you know, another month or two. And um, so I think they, they kind of get it. And, you know, I, th- th- that's the thing. If I wasn't, you know, in optimal health, if I, if I wasn't in really good shape for my age and, you know, really strong and, 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 and athletic, you know, maybe people be like, ah, what's he talking about? Like it hasn't really done anything to him, but you know, it's, you can't argue. <laughs> it's hard to argue with, you know, with reality. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's um, you know, you can certainly get in good shape eating garbage. You know, I think a, a lot of us have in some, at some time or another, but it's a hell of a lot easier to stay in good shape, get in mm-hmm. good shape and stay in good shape like this. I've, I've never had to um, really try to stay lean and to, and to keep most of my musculature, like I don't get much time to work out when I do, I get great results, but when I don't, you know, I just maintain, I maintain a low body fat percentage and I maintain most of my muscle mass. And that's, that's never been the case. Even when I was a teenager or in my early twenties, uh, well, my early twenties, I was carnivore. So that was very easy, but mid to late twenties. And, and after I sort of stopped before and after I was doing that, you know, it was, if I wasn't working out like crazy, um, you know, I would, I would be putting on weight and, and not being in good shape. Now I'm just effortlessly in good shape all the time. And, you know, and, and so I think that's, I think that's very significant as well, because, you know, people can, can damage their health and hurt themselves and work really hard and do whatever to get low body fat percentage. And, you know, we see, you know, athletes and, and bodybuilders and things like that do, uh, pretty extreme things in order to to get a certain look or a certain physique or whatever. But I mean, they're, they're really working against themselves, whereas this is just effortless. You know, it, it just works with you. You're always going to be sort of running optimally. And so when you do put in work, you get a lot more out of it and you maintain it. So I think that's uh, that effortless ability to maintain good physique and conditioning, I think is uh, speaks for itself. Mm, to sort of to add to that i think uh, as as we get older the sort of difference between somebody who's carnivore and someone who's eating a sad diet mm. becomes more stark do you know what i mean like asha like you're a bit older than i am in your age group you would just look vastly different so much leaner so much healthier better skin everything like that than the average person your age 
Um, and you know, you can imagine when you're 60 or when you're 70, the sort of difference, you know, it'll start to kind of become more and more extreme really. Yeah. And, and what's interesting, what's interesting also is, is, yeah. And I was, I mean, there's some people who have, who are naturally gifted, who have like naturally good genes and they're going to be, you know, they're going to have a great physique regardless of how they eat. And, and, and it's interesting because, you know, I kind of noticed there's some, you know, influencers online and, and who are young also who are young and they have great genes and they're not, you know, eating optimally. They're not eating well. And they're saying, yeah, look, I'm in good shape, you know, do what I'm, what I'm doing. And, and, and to where like, okay, well, the average person isn't going to be able to achieve their physique eating how they're eating. Like they're, you know, they were just gifted with a great physique. Uh, but, but a lot of us, so for me, I was, I didn't always have a great physique, like all throughout my twenties and thirties and early forties, I had an average, like very unimpressive skinny fat physique, you know, skinny arms, skinny body, you know, little, like no ab definition, you know, no, no chest muscles. Like, it, like you couldn't tell. And I was working out like crazy. Uh, like Anthony said, he was working out like crazy and didn't have much to show for it. Same thing when I was eating. And I was eating like a quote unquote healthy Mediterranean diet at the time, yeah. but, and I was working out usually about five, five days a week, uh, hour and 45 minutes, two hours, uh, each workout. So I was like, you know, killing myself in the gym and had nothing to show for it. And this is all throughout my twenties, 30, thirties and early forties. And yeah, once I went keto and then carnivore, like my, my body, like, effort, yeah, effortlessly just, yeah, I leaned out, my muscles uh, grew, my, you know, my body composition just really improved and optimized. And, and I work out less now, um, uh, less frequently. So I, I spent about an hour uh, each for each workout in the gym, um, you know, basic push pull compound uh, movements, compound exercises. I, I, never work out more than three or four days a week. So, which is much less than what I was doing in my twenties and thirties. And my physique now at age 49 is 10 times better than it was when I was, you know, when I was in my twenties. So, so it is interesting. And, you know, I, I get, I have, you know, young guys, guys in their twenties and so forth that see me in the gym, like, dude, what, you know, what, what do you do? What's your workout routine? I'm like, I eat meat and I don't need any, <laughs> I don't need any plants. <laughs> And, uh, cause it really, you know, that really makes a difference. And a lot of folks, and I was the same way, uh, when I was their age, but a lot of people don't realize that, that, uh, 80% of the, of the formula is, is, um, you know, what you're doing in the kitchen and 20% is what you're doing in the gym. Uh, but you know, a lot of folks don't realize that. And so they're, you know, busting their butts in the gym, you know, just like yeah. how I was when I'm in my twenties and thirties, not too much progress uh, to show for it um yeah so and, and that's one of like one of my you know motivations for you know the instagram account and posting what's going on with me is you know i'd like to if i can help some you know some younger well not only younger people but um improve how they feel improve their health improve their um physical fitness um you know lose excess body fat um then you know that, that that'd be awesome like if prevent you know, enable them to avoid making a lot of mistakes and taking so long to learn, uh, you know, to learn more, more quickly what it took me 20 years to learn. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, my, um, one of my motivators for the stuff I do you know, on social media. Yeah. Like I remember a story about Michael Vick is like his college roommate talking about how he would just eat like McDonald's and pizza. And he said, it was like, it was in on Michael Vick. It was like taking steroids. Like he was just getting more and more jacked and ripped. It didn't matter what he ate, he just ate high octane garbage. And, uh, and he was just, just yoked. And so I think he's, you know, one of those guys that it doesn't matter what he eats. And obviously he was working out a lot. Um, you know, and when I was, when I was playing, uh, you know, you know, rugby back in the day, I could, you know, during the season, you know, I just worked out so much that, that I was, I was, I could get in very, very good shape. I was very lean, very muscular, but the second I stopped working out, you know, things just started to deteriorate you know, visibly. So it was, it was something that I had to maintain through a lot of effort. Um, whereas now I, I don't, there was, um, it's interesting. You see a lot of like Pacific Islanders, you know, with, with like no effort or anything they, and they're just absolutely ripped. Yeah. Um, they have a, a higher prevalence of something called the Burley gene, 
which uh, you can look this up. It's interesting. Um, they, they've sort of duplicated this in, in mice and animals. There's actually a company in France that makes cows with burly gene because it has like a lot more muscle mass. It's like lean muscle mass. Um, and that was obviously, you know, what, what people sort of wanted in, in certain markets, but these things are, are yoked. I mean, it looks like it's, it's cow that's just on, you know, like, you know, you know, Ronnie Coleman level sort of, you know, <laughs> so juice. And, um, but a lot of these guys will have that. And so it's, um, it's something that keeps you very lean, very muscular. And I played rugby with guys that ju they just looked like, you know, they were going out for, for Mr. Universe and they were like, never been in the gym in my life. I have never once lifted a weight, you know? And yeah. so those have, they have that gene. Unfortunately, the rest of us have to have to work for it, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but yeah, and the, uh, the, the Islanders are blessed yeah. particularly mm -hmm. when they, if they stick to like basic, if they stick to carnivore because you know, the better, yeah. not many generations ago, it was all like pigs yeah. and seafood, you know? Yeah, exactly. they, and people. They stick sometimes. to God. Yeah. And what? And, yeah, and people. <laughs> it used to be back in the day, you know, yeah. like uh, I think there was like, um, you know, Captain Cook that like discovered the Hawaii. I think his uh, his team got uh, hit by cannibals. Um, maybe Cook himself, but anyway, some of them did. And uh, but yeah, um, uh, it's carnivore though. I don't know. I guess can't can't knock it too much. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's good for you, but I'm not encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's obviously not happening anymore. But um, but yeah, they were just just eating a lot of meat and uh, and what what plants they did eat. I think that was the a minimum of what they were doing. Obviously, not all all islanders have that burly gene. You know, not all all of them have that, but uh, some of them do, and they they have that sort of effortless uh, physique, regardless of what they eat, sort of like Michael Vick, but you know, it's, um, it's very telling when, you know, you do see normal people like, you know, the three of us that, you know, do have to work for it and, you know, maybe don't even get as, as the results that we want to with the hard work, but when you, you switch over your diet, it makes it, it makes just such a dramatic difference. And, you know, I was able to get quite a good physique when, and getting very good shape, um, by, by working very, very hard, but, you know, I always ate very meat heavy anyway, you know, and if I was eating just a, just a bunch of, you know, garbage probably wouldn't have had the same results. Um, but now it's, but even then, even with like the little plants and carbs that I was eating, the second I stopped working out, the second I had like an off season sort of stuff, I just started just, you know, uh, losing my physique and, and, uh, and, uh, putting on, on fat. And it was, um, you know, and that was just, that was, that was what I saw, you know, in season, out of season was very different Anthony. And, um, you know, so it, uh, it took, it took a lot of effort, but now I don't, like I, I work out so much less than I did then. And I have a better physique than I did for most of the time. Mm. We were, uh, Anthony, before you jumped on, Ash and I were talking mm -hmm. about, um, that he, he eats twice a day. So like AM breakfast, doesn't eat so then you go to work asha don't eat lunch or anything like that and then come home and have dinner i think yeah. i need to start doing that i'm gonna commit to that because at the moment i'm sort of having like a small breakfast then i'm eating lunch and then i'm eating dinner and i think i'm eating too much and probably too much protein first not enough mm. fat so i think that's just yeah. going to be and that's also seems so easy if if i'm at work or i'm out and about i don't have to go and buy anything or find food or anything like that you know i think uh I think that might work for me. Whereas, and, yeah, and actually. there's, yeah, there, there's another nice benefit to not eating lunch or not, you know, eating your first meal during lunchtime is you can get in uh, lunch hour workouts. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's what I do a lot. And, you know, people go on lunch break and eat their lunch and I'll go hit the gym and, um, you know, bang out a workout during my lunch hour and get back into work. And so, yeah, it's, I really like that routine and not, I like not having to worry about bringing food to, to the office or, yeah. you know, getting food somewhere. Uh, it's just so much easier. I eat at home uh, before I leave for work and, and then I eat when I get home from work. Um, and then I have, you know, either I can work through lunch or I can work out during lunch. Um, so it's, it's nice. Yeah, that's that's for those of you blessed with a lunch hour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, they had they had a gym at um, one of the hospitals I worked at, and so that was that was fine. But that was so busy at that hospital, like it was just good oh, luck yeah. ever using it. But at least you know, as soon as I finished, I would 
just sort of jet in there, just, just bust out like a 45 minute hour workout or something like that. And, and that worked pretty well, but uh, yeah, it's very hit and miss during the day. Like today's, today's nice, you know, you have a, you know, have, have um, a bit more breathing room, but uh, normally it's quite busy. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So then you, you got into um, sort of uh, uh, the business side of, of this as well. You have like, um, was it the primal wellness tallows and things like that? Is that right? Yeah. So, um, so I do, I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner. Um, so I work with clients, um, and, you know, consult with them with regards to nutrition and and lifestyle and and fitness. Um, and I've been doing that for a number of years, like the main focus, um, of mine has been with, um, in the mental health field, I've run a, a mental health clinic for the past, since 2015 so the seven years um, more or less and and yeah that's been interesting working with uh, mental health clients um it's certainly been a challenge the so not a challenge in um in having clients make a lot of progress and improve their symptoms but it's it's been a challenge explaining uh and bringing up the topic of nutrition to somebody when they come in uh, to a mental health clinic and expect to see a psychiatrist and get medications or uh, meet with a therapist and do psychotherapy. So um, yeah, I get all kinds of reactions and, and I'm sure most people think I'm nuts. And, and I, I guess I'm lucky because I'm, um, you know, I, I'm kind of persistent and I'm kind of stubborn. And, and I know that the diet works very, very well and is very effective at improving mental health conditions. I know that from personal experience, I know that from working with many clients uh, who made tremendous progress. And, and so it's worth it to me to have to, you know, get through all the initial um, skepticism and doubts. And like some clients will, you know, they, this is mental health. So some clients will freak out, like, what are you talking to me about food for? I came here yeah. to see a psychiatrist or a therapist. Like, <laughs> why did my doctor refer me to you guys? And uh, but, Because he hates but you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants you to have a heart attack. <laughs> But, but it's, but it's in the end, it's worth it because I do end up convincing a, a percentage of them to, uh, to clean up their diet and to, um, to improve their diet. And, and like I said, the ones that do it experience phenomenal improvements in their mental health issues, in depression, anxiety, uh, panic disorder, ADHD. Um, and, and even what's, what's most interesting is, is, um, seeing the progress that people make, uh, people who have been through traumas, uh, people with PTSD, uh, people, you know, who have been through horrific, um, PTSD type incidents and to see them and they've tried, most of these people have tried everything. They've tried therapy, they've taken medications, nothing's worked. They're still dealing with depression and anxiety, suicidal ideation, et cetera, et cetera. And, we have them clean up their diet and start eating well. And lo and behold, in only a matter of a, a, you know, a couple of months, usually a month, month and a half, two months. Oh my gosh. Like I'm not having panic attacks anymore. Or I'm like, my anxiety levels are so much lower now. I'm, I'm not depressed anymore. Why I actually feel, you know, feel happy now. And, and so, so it's, um, so it's worth, um, that initial, you know, shock that people have when I start talking to them about, um, uh, diet, but yeah, so that's one of the things that I'm doing. Uh, the other thing, as you mentioned, um, so I started up a business, uh, of tallow based, uh, soaps and skincare products, uh, a few months ago, it's called spearhead soaps. Nice. And, um, yeah. And, and so, I mean, part of, you know, my nutritional journey to paleo and the keto and the carnivore has been to try and remove toxins and, and uh, toxic ingredients and sub- substances uh, from myself. Um, and obviously the main way you do that is through diet, but also a, a main, uh, like a major way of exposing yourself to toxins and harmful chemicals is through your skin. Um, you know, whether it's through uh, lotions or soap or, um, or sunscreen and, you know, a few years ago, I, I, I started using natural um, tallow soaps and found that one, they're a lot better on my skin than industrial commercial soaps uh, were. 
Uh, my skin was much less dried out. Um, I felt a lot better. I felt a lot cleaner. And you just start feeling a lot better also when you're not um, consuming those chemicals. And so because, so how it started is I don't like to throw stuff away. And, you know, I eat, obviously I eat meat a lot. I, I'm making a lot of like um, briskets and chuck roast out. So I have a ton of tallow. And so I have tallow and I can only eat so much of it. Like my family, you know, none of my family members are carnivore. So I was storing the stuff in my freezer and, you know, at a certain point, like half of my freezer is like bags of, of frozen tallow. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Like, I don't want to throw this away, but it just like, it kept, kept building and building in my, in my freezer. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll like learn how to make soap and maybe I'll, I can make my own tallow. And, and then, you know, then I don't want to have to wait, you know, let it go to waste. And I did that. And I'm like, wow, this stuff's really good. Like I'm, I'm really, you know, enjoying this, uh, these tallow soaps and they feel great. And so I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'll put up a website and see maybe some other, some other carnivores and other people might, you know, might want to buy some. And <clears throat> so, yeah, I did that a couple months ago <clears throat> and yeah, it's got, it's been going really well. Um, people who have been, who have been ordering and using the, the products, um, seem to really like them. Um, and I, ex you know, expanded, like people would ask me, Oh, do you have, you know, a tallow such and such? And, and <clears throat> so like, Oh, well, let me look into that and see if I can make something like that. So like now I have a range of, of tallow products, everything from, um, you know, lotion, body lotion to face cream, to anti-aging face mask, to lip balm, to, um, um, you know, sh uh, shampoo bar now, um, so it's, it's a lot of different things, uh, that, that I kind of developed and, and, and yeah, I mean, they work great. You feel great using them and you're not ingesting all these harsh and toxic chemicals in your body, which, you know, aren't, aren't good for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's great that you're, you're able to incorporate this in your, in your work with mental health as well. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that's something, especially, you know, now that that uh, professor Palmer from Harvard came out with his book, brain energy. That's, that's something that's becoming, you know, much more, uh, accepted, uh, in the mainstream, um, showing that you can use even just a ketogenic diet, obviously, you know, needing, needing a lot of meat and fat, uh, if you're going to be doing that properly to reverse and to alleviate even schizophrenia and OCD, bipolar, uh, certainly helps with PTSD, depression, and anxiety, and even uh, there are even been studies looking at uh, that Professor Palmer mentions in his book. Studies looking at uh, people coming off of you know, alcohol dependency and withdrawing, and they found that they it was that they actually withdrew had their withdrawal process was much much easier. And not everyone knows this, but uh, withdrawing from from alcohol can actually be uh, quite dangerous. You can get seizures. And uh, you can die. It's it's very serious if you're if you're one of these people that are seriously addicted to alcohol. So you give benzodiazepines to, to sort of level them out as they're going through that. And they get um, you know uh, delirium uh, tremens and uh, the DTS, and um, so you have to give sort of some uh, benzodiazepines to sort of get them through that, so they don't they don't have seizures. And they found that the people that were on keto, uh, they were alcohol detoxing. They had far less cravings. It was far easier for them to uh, abstain from alcohol, and they actually required less uh, benzodiazepines to to uh, keep their their DTs under control. So you know, there's it's objective as well as subjective. You know, they required less medications to get them through the withdrawal process. So I thought that was very interesting, and um, you could even you know like send out a flyer to some of these people like, Hey, you're coming to me. This is, this is my approach. You know, you're going to be, you know, we, we address Fire this warning. With, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we address this, uh, with, you know, the metabolic, you, you call it, you know, metabolic therapy, uh, because that's what, that's what Dr. Palmer does, you know, addressing different metabolic issues and certainly diet is, is very, very important to that. That's, that's the majority of that. And, uh, and just let them know and then sort of cite a lot of his work. It might, it might, uh, save you some arguments when, <laughs> when they come in. That's, that's not a bad idea, but, but yeah, it's interesting <clears throat> what you mentioned about, uh, alcohol dependency and with withdrawals and so forth. And, and, you know, in a lot of these things, um, you know, I've experienced personally, 
um, a lot of you know the, the health improvements and and the main um, reason for me becoming interested in, in in diet nutrition and changing my diet and you know starting to make dietary changes were like I said health issues and problems that I had encountered and the the main issues um, that were bothering me and hindering my functioning were um, uh, anxiety and uh, panic disorder and depression, uh, which I had had anxiety and depression since childhood. Um, and during my 30s, I started uh, developing panic attacks, started having panic attacks, and that you know over a you know significant amount of time became more and more frequent and more and more severe until when they you know, got to their worst. I was having them on a daily basis, was unable to work. I was having them at work while I was talking to clients or talking to coworkers. And so I ended up having to quit my job at the time, which um, sucked because it was a job I really, really liked. Um, and I couldn't work for, for, you know, a year, year and a half or so. And I mean, I was a train wreck and, and I had, I'd been in, in psychotherapy for four years every week. And, you know, my therapist was great, super smart. Uh, I enjoyed the therapy. Um, as much as one can enjoy therapy, but but it didn't help at all with my symptoms, didn't help alleviate my depression, my anxiety didn't help stop the panic attacks. It's recommended that I go on anti-anxiety meds um, just because. And, but that I think fortunately for me, um, you know, that was something that freaked me out. I didn't want to go near any any psych meds. I didn't want any chemicals like affecting my brain at all. And so then, you know out of desperation, I went online and like, oh, there's gotta be something else. I have to live like this for the rest of my life and not be able to support my family and not be able to work. And, and so I came across a few, um, I think a book and a few articles that mentioned that some people have sensitivities to, to sugar and to some other, you know, processed foods that can exacerbate anxiety. And I was, you know, so desperate at the time I was willing to try, try anything. So, okay, let me try this. Let me change up my diet. And, and, you know, to my uh, pleasant surprise, that totally, completely got rid of uh, of the anxiety, stopped the panic attacks, got rid of the depression. Uh, you know, I was in my I think late 30s at the time, and first felt to be like happy and content and not depressed, and um, and you know to not uh, be experiencing anxiety. And so throughout, it was interesting, and so throughout you know those decades. Um, I, like a lot of people, um, you know, I didn't agree to take any psych meds, but I um, tended to self-medicate with alcohol mm. and, um, you know, drank too much, drank excessively at times. You know, I was, probably, you could probably call me a high functioning uh, alcoholic. Um, I did a lot of stupid stuff, a lot of regrettable stuff mm. and um, stuff I'm certainly not proud of. And I was always the person, cause that was basically the only time when I felt you know, no anxiety and where I didn't feel depressed when I felt like calm and relaxed and like content was after I'd had a few drinks. Um, so I was always, the, you know, the type of person like, you know, if I'm in a social situation, people have a few drinks, um, of course I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to drink. And so fast forward to when I started carnivore, one of the interesting things that happened to me where was that I stopped craving alcohol and I stopped like even though I wasn't when I was keto. And so when I went paleo and then keto, I felt good. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have any anxiety anymore or depression, um, but I still like to drink, um, you know, in social situations and so forth. Um, when I, after I went carnivore, I stopped craving alcohol. And, and there were many times where we'd be out with friends, having dinner or whatever, and everybody be ordering cocktails and drinks. And I'd get, a glass of Pellegrino and, and be fine. Like, I just, I don't feel like drinking. And that mm. would never, that would never have happened to me before. If there was any excuse to have a drink or have some drinks with friends or whatnot, I, I, you know, I'd be all over it. But since going carnivore, so, so I think it does something interesting to, to your brain, to your craving, for, uh, your cravings for addictive substances, it really lowers them. So I think that's, um, you know, has something to do with how alcoholics are able to wean off and uh, alcohol a lot easier and not, you know, go through uh, as extreme withdrawals and not have as extreme because it really, at least for me, got rid of the cravings. And I still don't, I mean, I, I totally quit drinking in, in uh, this past September, 
And yeah, I mean, I feel great. I feel fine. I don't feel like drinking. I don't crave alcohol anymore. So, so it's interesting, um, you know, experiencing that, but, but yeah, there, I'm sure there's definitely something into, it. and I think that's pr it probably holds true for, for any kind of addiction, whether it's, you know, drugs, methamphetamines or heroin. I, I would, you know, posit that any addict is going to have a much easier time breaking their addiction if they're strict carnivore. Yeah. Definitely. And, and, and that's, and that seems to be what the literature is showing, you know, it seems to be what people are, are doing. And, um, you know, there, there's also something to be said that, you know, if you are healthy and your, your body and your brain are working better and you're healthier and you're happier, you don't, you don't necessarily need uh, to use drugs and alcohol to, to get those same sort of feelings and to make yourself feel happy and normal. And uh, you already feel good. You already feel normal and you don't, you don't need a crutch to bring you forward. There's a lot of reasons people you know, use drugs and alcohol, of course, but you know, that's a major one. And so, you know, ho hopefully, you know, that's uh, something that people can find that they can optimize their health and their mental health and that they won't, they won't need those sorts of substances. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, in terms of sort of the mechanism that's going on, obviously it makes you feel better and you're more happy generally, but is there something to do with producing more ketones or something kind of like biochemically, Anthony, do you think that's going on that's making it easier to, you know, break addictions? Um, I haven't looked into it, um, to a great extent. Um, Dr. Palmer's book is more, um, uh, you know, has more, more references to that. The, you know, one, one of the things that, I mean, just for the alcohol withdrawal sort of things, you know, you're going to be you know, having, having a seizure, uh, potential there, just being in ketosis suppresses, you know, seizures you know, or, or protects your brain from that. It raises your threshold, uh, for getting seizures. So, uh, that right there, I mean, that's, that's a clear, um, you know, physiological benefit of being in ketosis is that you're going to be protected from seizures. So you won't need as much, uh, medication to, to keep you out of that. Um, your mental health is going to be better in a lot of ways as well. Your brain is going to work better because it has its, its primary energy source to ketones are, um, and, it also helps your, your mitochondria function better, which has a lot of benefits in your brain and in your body. And it seems to be that there's at least a, a strong connection between dysregulation and dysfunction of your mitochondria in your brain and uh, substance abuse and mental disorders. So getting into ketosis and, and having your mitochondria work better and other systems work better seems to, to help that. And uh, I think long-term that's certainly going to help because after a few months, your mitochondria, they completely turn over and then you have, you know, three, four times as many and they work better. So your, your brain and body just work phenomenally better at that point. Mm. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, I also think that feeling um, satiated and being, you know, giving your body all the nutrients it needs, I think that should have generally calms people down and helps them make better decisions as well. Like you see a, a lot of people who turn to alcohol, for example, they're often, they're often overweight and it's kind of a sign that, you know, they're, they're basically putting anything they can inside their body uh, to try and get some sort of nutrition. Um, and well, that I, too, I mean, we're, we're overfed and undernourished. Yeah. Right. And, you know, if you have to, if you have to eat, a whole bunch of things just to get what little nutrients are in there. And you're, you're bringing in a lot of carbs and calories with that. You know, you're going to, you're going to put on excess adipose tissue and, and you're only going to barely get enough uh, nutrients. Sometimes you're not even going to get enough nutrients. Most people take supplements. Most people take vitamins. Most people take uh, things because their food is deficient in it and yet they're overweight. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're eating more calories than they need. They're getting more energy than they need, but they're not getting enough nutrients you know, and that's, that's very telling, you know, and it means that you're not eating the right thing. It's very clear. It's very straightforward. You know, if you're not getting, you know, an adequate nutrition, then you're eating the wrong thing, you know, especially if you have to eat such an abundance of energy to still not get enough nutrients yeah, and you're really not eating the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that, you know, that kind of comes back to what we were talking about earlier 
um, you know, I don't eat a lot of food in terms of quantity, it's like, really not that much. You know, yeah, 20, you know, 22 ounces of food per day is, is about what I eat. And, um, you know, I'm not huge. I'm, you know, I'm five, nine, I'm, uh, 135, 137 pounds. Um, but, uh, but yeah, when you eat right, you don't need to eat a, a yeah. large volume of food or a ton of calories. If it's nutrient dense, you're getting all those micronutrients, all the, the fatty acids, the amino acids that your body needs without all those excess calories and, and carbohydrates. So, um, so yeah, you, your body can be very efficient and very efficiently utilize small quantities of food if they are very nutrient dense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I tell people that, you know, when you're eating high density nutrition, you don't need to eat as much or as often. And I find that as well. You know, I'm, I'm around two thirty, um, six foot three, and I don't, I, I don't honestly eat all that much, probably like two pounds of, of like fatty ribeye a day. If I'm working out, then I'll, that'll easily double, you know, and, um, and I'll probably have to eat double that and work out to maintain like two forty, which is what I generally like to be at if I'm working out. And, um, you know, but, uh, but just, just sort of normal sedentary life and just maintaining where I am. Yeah. Probably like two pounds a day, fatty meat. It's not that much, you know mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, it's like old ladies eating more than me, you know, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're coming from a nutrient deficit. And I think their bodies just are, are trying to sort of recover and regrow and rebuild where I'm sort of at a, at a steady state at this point. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Uh, thank you very much. That was a great chat. And uh, Asha, where can people find you? So I'm on Instagram um, at Primal Wellness. Um, I've got a YouTube channel. Um, where else? TikTok. Um, you can all search Primal Wellness uh, on all those platforms. And um, the tallow soaps, uh, Spearhead Soap um, website, spearheadsoaps.com. And on Instagram, Spearhead Soap. And um, yeah, that's, those are the main, main areas. Awesome. Cool. Great. Well, thank you so much, Asha. I really appreciate it. And uh, as always, thanks, Dr. Chafee. Yeah, no, thank you both. Yeah, it was good to see you guys. Thank you, guys. It was great talking to you.